we are back and this video is going to be a look kind of like a preview uh, of what the Blue Jackets wingers might look like as far as their lineup goes. We're going to actually start this with a uh, kind of a brief rundown of what last season looked like. Uh, so line one was pretty much Patrick Line and most sometimes Voracek, sometimes Nyquist, they kind of moved uh, back and forth. The second line was Bjorkstrand, no longer here. Uh, and whoever, whichever one of uh, Voracek and Nyquist who wasn't on the first line with Line A uh, was usually on the second line with Oliver Bjorkstrand. Uh, the third line was, uh, you know, this is where, where, where you'd find uh, Max Domi when he was still on the team. Texier got some time here too, as well as Yegor Shinikov when he was in the lineup. He, did, he wasn't in the lineup for every uh, game. Sometimes he was a healthy scratch. I think he played in Cleveland once. And line four, you have guys like Gregory Hoffman when he was still there. There, there is some turnover on the wings here. Gregory Hoffman, Eric Robinson, Emil Bemstrom, uh, and then the AHL call-ups when people got injured. Guys like Brendan Gauntz, uh, Trey fix Wolanski, Carson Meyer, those kind of guys. Uh, so that was just a brief rundown of what the uh, winger lineup looked like last season to just kind of compare it to this season. And this is really where you can tell uh, that the Jackets have improved uh, their team the most, mostly because of the acquisition of Johnny Goudreau. But there are also a few uh, new arrivals that make this group a little bit more exciting as well. Uh, so for all intents and purposes for this year, I'm just going to assume uh, that Line A and Goudreau are going to be the top line for the for the year. I know that there's a possibilities that Lars splits them up. Maybe they don't uh, necessarily click uh, at all, which would, would, which would be shocking to me. Uh, it would be surprising if Johnny Goudreau and Patrick Line couldn't get it going. Uh, but for this video, I'm just going, going to assume that the top line is going to be Patrick Line and Johnny Goudreau for the entire thing. Uh, the middle six is where things get murky because I can see the season starting with Voracek and Nyquist on the second line and the third line having uh, Kent Johnson and Kirill Marchenko on the third line. But I would not be surprised if that middle six uh, gets mixed up or even swapped where Marchenko and Kent Johnson end up being the second line and Nyquist, Voracek ends up being like a two veterans on the third line in between a stenner there. So it, as far as that goes, nothing would really surprise me as far as how the middle six would go. And for the fourth line, I'm, I'm guessing that's where Eric Robinson will end up. And I'm going to say either Emil Bemstrom or Yegor Shinikov makes it on the fourth line. My thing with Shinikov is that uh, he could definitely make the roster. He is definitely probably one of the uh, 12 best forwards on the team. Well, not a center, so I guess one of the eight best wingers on the team. Especially over a guy like Emil Bemstrom, Yegor Shinikov might get the edge there. Uh, but what is really going to be best for his development? If the Jackets really do see him as somebody with a really big upside and with a strong shot and all that, do you feel like it's best for Yegor Shinikov to start the year in Cleveland where he'd get more you know, big minutes? He'd be t on the top line on the top power play unit getting a bunch of minutes in the AHL. Would that, do you think that would be good for his growth? Or maybe he just, like, is there anywhere, is there anything for him to prove in the AHL that he hasn't already? Because he was in the uh, Traverse City Prospect Tournament last year, and he w and he killed it last year. Uh, so would putting him in the AHL help him develop, or would it just have him uh, playing against the lower league where, yes, he'd put up numbers, but he wouldn't be really uh, getting better? And if it is, if he is sent to Cleveland for development, uh, where else in the roster does he go? Does he, you know, he's not cracking the line with Line Angu Drew, obviously. Uh, Kirill Marchenko and Kent Johnson project are probably going to be better than him from the gate. Uh, does he replace either Voracek or Nyquist on the third line and have either Jake Voracek or you know Gus Nyquist being one of the most expensive fourth liners ever? I don't see it. So if Yegor Shinikov has a spot on this roster this year, it might be on the fourth line. And that might not uh, improve until next year when Gus Nyquist's contract runs out and maybe they don't re-sign him. Although Gus Nyquist has uh, expressed interest in re-signing uh, after his contract ends this year. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. I think Yegor Shinikov is definitely one of the uh, more interesting conundrums that the organization has. And it, personally, if it were me, I might just stick him on the fourth line because uh, I'm not sure what sending him to Cleveland would do. He, you know, I'm guessing he would play well, maybe improve his two-way game a little bit. Uh, but we saw what we saw what he looked like in Traverse City against lesser competition, and it was really good. So uh, he might do really good in the AHL, uh, but get to the NHL and run into the same problem he had last year. So that, that's definitely an interesting question. We'll see what the organization does. And then I have some extras that um, will probably start the year in Cleveland for sure, 
And then when, if injuries happen, they'll be called up. Guys like Liam Foody, uh, Carson Meyer. I'm surprised Tyler Engel didn't get a call up at all last year. Uh, maybe this year will be the year. Trey Fix, Wolanski, Josh Dunn. And then newcomers, Matthew Olivier, who was uh, acquired for his physical toughness and fighting skills. So uh, if, if a team is known for having, to, you know, th- that might be a call up for the Capitals with a guy like Tom Wilson. Or maybe if, uh, you know, some a team like the Wild runs rough shot on the Blue Jackets like they did last year. For that second matchup, Matthew Olivier might be getting in the lineup there. Uh, and Yuna Luoto, which uh, appeared to get a contract on being Line's friend. Although, you know, he probably does have legitimate skill. He has been in the NHL before, so uh, good for him. Uh, so anyway, that was pretty much all of my thoughts on the Blue Jackets wingers this year. It's very possible that a guy like uh, Kent Johnson and Kirill Marchenko, one of those might end up with a call there. I know Kent Johnson, obviously, with his uh, dominant World Junior performances, definitely getting some looks for... Uh, Calder there, but I think Kirill Marchenko is definitely kind of uh, flying under the radar. I think people are sleeping on him a little bit too much. Uh, he was very good in the KHL, and even last year when he was getting kind of the uh, you're going to North America treatment where he gets his ice time diminished and he gets sent to the minors and whatever, his production stayed pretty good throughout the entire thing with that, so I'm, that's pretty impressive to me at least. So thank you all for watching. If you made it this far, please feel free to leave a like and a subscribe if you enjoy the video. Let me know what you think about the Blue Jackets winger position down in the comments below. I think it's pretty good. Uh, is there somebody that I just skimmed over that I should have uh, talked about more? Is there somebody that I'm overhyping? Maybe I'm maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself with the Kent Johnson, Kirill Marchenko, Calder talks. Just let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all again for watching, and I will see you at the next one.